Hello and welcome, humans. I'm She Robot, and today we're going to talk about the force feedback feature in Project Cars 2. I have been part of WMD since Slightly Mad Studios launched it for Project Cars 2 back in the summer of 2015. For those of you who don't know about it, WMD means World of Mass Development which is kind of an early access phase where users can participate in the development process of the game. Anyway, after two years I have got around 300 hours of gameplay. Most of it focused on the testing of all cars and how they feel on the steering wheel. Besides, through the private WMD forum created for such purpose I have been participating in the discussion about the force feedback of the game and how the development team improved it day after day. So I think it would be good if I share some of the things I've learnt about the force feedback of this title with all of you. Now, if you played Project Cars 1 you'd probably agree about its force feedback being the most complex to configure among all sim racing titles. And even after going through that process many complained they didn't get used to it or like it that much. But this is something that, as you'll see, has changed a lot for the good on the second version of this simulator. So, let's start, first of all showing you the content of this video. First of all I'll make a short introduction of the new force feedback featured in Project Cars 2, and the main differences with the one we had in Project Cars 1. Then I'll go through the device and game settings to get the best of this new force feedback. After that I'll show you the new force feedback widget featured in Project Cars 2. We'll introduce you the Cars and Tracks Force Feedback Spreadsheet I have created to gather all the relevant information you may need about the Force Feedback system of this simulator. And I will close this video with some tips and tricks. While most sim racing titles out there come with a Force Feedback that reflects the kind of approach its developers have about how the cars should feel, the force feedback of Project Cars 1 tried to go beyond that, offering the player a level of customization that would allow him to decide the kind of feedback he would like to feel through the steering wheel. Being this a great idea, it led in practice to such complexity that a lot of players had problems configuring these effects. Not being used to such kind of customization level, console users were probably the ones who suffered it the most. The thing is that level of customization wouldn't have been a problem if the force feedback were good out of the box. But that wasn't the case. This left users having to deal with around 40 different parameters in total. Besides, it wasn't clear what was the function of some of these parameters. A part of this, Project Cars 1 didn't have a force feedback auto-tune feature to auto-calibrate the strength of the effect, which would have helped to reduce clipping issues. And there was no option either to adjust the force feedback parameters while the player was actually driving the car on the track, which would have made things even easier to those messing with all these parameters, as they were forced to exit to the car's setup menu and change the parameters there. And finally there weren't any good general force feedback profiles available in-game either. But with the help of some community members who shared their device and game settings other users started to know how to configure theirs to get the kind of feeling on the steering wheel they wanted. Besides, as the game allowed to have specific force feedback settings for each car some community members, like Jake Spade, created force feedback profiles for every one of them, which helped even more to those struggling with the force feedback settings of the game. But let's see how slightly Mad Studios has changed all that in the new version of their simulator to improve the force feedback to levels never seen in the first one. First of all, and these are very good news, the force feedback is very good out of the box. The developers have spent months creating force feedback profiles for most of the devices available. 
so players don't have to spend hours trying to find good settings. Second, force feedback settings have been reduced to just five, so any tunning will be way easier than before. Then we got now three great force feedback presets that will offer three different force feedback experiences. And a part of these three we have the option to use a fourth custom preset if we still think we need something different and we're willing to go for it. A part of that there is no need anymore to have specific force feedback configurations for every car. As all of them have been tweaked by the developers themselves and the user can easily adjust the general force feedback settings of the game if necessary anyway. But not only that, as there are new features too, this new version offers an auto-tune feature that helps a lot to avoid clipping. And it also allows the player to map some force feedback parameters to buttons or keys so they can be adjusted while the player is actually driving the car on the track. Great, isn't it? So, let's leave this introduction where we compared both versions of the simulator and let's talk now about how to configure the force feedback in Project Cars 2. As most of you already know, Project Cars 2 is coming to PC, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 platforms. It supports most of the steering wheels available on the market today and also game pads. In this video I will focus on the PC version of this simulator, and I will be using a steering wheel. As these are usually the devices that require more tweaking to get the best of them. But those players who don't own a steering wheel can rest assured. This new version of the game has been also optimized to be played with a game pad. Anyway, in order to configure the force feedback in Project Cars 2 we need to follow three steps. First of all we need to set the device settings on the system. So I'll show you how I have set the parameters of the device in the game controller's screen available in Microsoft Windows. As you see I'm using a Thrustmaster T300 steering wheel as input device. If you don't have this steering wheel I suggest you to go to the official Project Cars forum, where I'm sure you'll find the recommended settings for your device. Or if you already played Project Cars 1 I guess the settings you used back then would be a good starting point here too. Probably the most important thing on these screens is reducing the overall strength of the force feedback, as you will be able to control its gain in-game later. 75% is the recommended value for the T300. Also note constant and periodic forces are set to 100%, while spring and damper gains are set to zero. The auto center settings are set to be controlled by the game, and the recommended rotation value of the steering wheel is 900 degrees. Once the device settings have been set in the operating system it's time to configure the device settings in-game. So let me start up to the game and show you mine. First of all we have to go to the options menu, where we will find the controls. There we have to select the type, make and model of the device we are using. This will load the default game control parameters for our device. As we usually do when we play a simulator for first time we should calibrate both the steering wheel and pedals. As this process is similar to what we found in Project Cars 1 and other simulators and there is no much more to say about it let me jump this step and move forward to save you a bit of time. I'm not changing it now, but if you have a clutch pedal it is recommended to set the automatic clutches off. Let's take a look now to the configuration section, where we'll find dead zone and sensitivity sliders. I recommend you to set all dead zones to zero, while steering, throttle, brake and clutch sensitivities should be set to 50, which mean they will be linear. But let's take a minute to talk about the speed sensitivity parameter. Depending on the speed of the car this parameter controls how much the wheels turn when you turn your steering wheel. Meaning that the higher this value the less the wheels will turn at higher speeds. 
As you see I'm using 45 as value here. I do that because Ben Collins, who has been physics consultant again on this version of the game, suggested to use this value in the internal WMD forums. And once I tested it I saw he was totally right, so I have been using it since then. Then we have the damper saturation. I used 25 as value here as this is the default value set when I selected the T300 as device, and I kept it because it feels good to me. But I have also seen users at WMD forums using a lower value. As I'm using a steering wheel I will not talk about the parameters related to controllers, as there is just a couple of them and you probably know them already. So I will move to the Edit Assignments section instead. Here you can map different functions to device axis or buttons, and of course also to keyboard keys. As the mapping process is well known by all of you I won't stop here a lot, but before continuing I just want to show you something. On the Edward Assistance section you'll find the option to map two different force feedback parameters I will explain in a minute, volume and tone. But let's move now to the last section of this control screen, where we will reach the third step to configure our device, the force feedback section. As I told you when I compared Project Cars 1 and Project Cars 2 we no longer have to deal with countless parameters but just these five you see here. Yes, I know, there are six parameters on this screen, not five. But I just don't consider the menu spring strut a real force feedback parameter as it controls how much the steering wheel moves when you exit your car and go back to the game menu. Anyway. Let's start explaining these. First of all we have what is called flavor, which is basically the kind of force feedback preset being applied. As I explained before we have three different presets plus a custom one. The first one I want to talk about is the raw preset. This one is unfiltered, pure rack forces. So the game is sending the force feedback signal as is to the device. As you can imagine this means there is no compression or auto-tune applied here. So depending on your steering wheel you may feel light force around center or you may get clipping if the signal strength is too high. But this is the recommended flavor for direct drive wheels. And for enthusiast steering wheels as Fanatec or Thrustmaster. Then we have the other two flavors, which use compression, auto-tune and other tweaks. Informative would be my preferred one of these two. It focus on giving you as much information as possible about road surface, curbs, tire slip, weight and suspension movement. Leaning towards the MZ parameter we found in Project Cars 1. If you're using a T300 you should like it, as it's not very different to the raw flavor but uses compression and auto-tune. In the other hand we have the immersive flavor which tries to mimic the forces you'd feel through the steering wheel in the real world giving them an immersive touch in the form of the FX and seat of pants parameters we found in Project Cars 1. But I have to say I have never liked how this flavor feels on the T300. So I have never used it more than just a few minutes from time to time in order to see how it evolved during the development of the game. And then we have the custom flavor which allows you to create your own force feedback configuration, putting at the tip of your fingers all these force feedback parameters available in Project Cars 1 and more, as you can also use the new features present in Project Cars 2, as is the case of the auto-tune feature, for example. In order to use this custom flavor you have to edit the ffb underscore custom.txt file you'll find inside the Project Cars 2 folder created by the game under My Documents folder. When you install the game this profile is just a copy of the raw flavor I already explained, and to change it you only need to open that text file and edit it at your will. Once that is done just save it and select the custom flavor in game to apply the settings you just created. 
I will not explain in this video how this file works and all the parameters available, as this video is already too long. But when we reach the last section of this video I'll show you where you can get a custom force feedback file which contains explanations about all these parameters. Now that I have explained you the fundamentals about the flavors is time to get into the other four force feedback parameters. If you are familiar with audio equipment or you are a guitar player you have probably noticed already that these look very similar to the controls you would find on a guitar amplifier. This is made on purpose. As in the end force feedback is similar to an audio signal and slightly mad studios thought that this analogy with the hi-fi world would be easily understandable by most players. But let me explain them to you anyway. First of all we have the gain parameter. This parameter controls the output strength of the force feedback sent to the steering wheel. Despite what you may read in the tip text shown to its right please note that all PC users should set this parameter as 100. As I explained a few minutes ago PC players should use the overall gain parameter available in the game controller screen of the operating system in the case they want to adjust the strength of the signal sent to the steering wheel. In case you are wondering why this is a good idea I'm going to give you a good reason, despite there are more. If you set the strength limit of your device on a device driver level no game out there will be able to go over that limit and cause undesired injuries to the player. This is specially important if you own a direct drive wheel or an enthusiast steering wheel with enough force. But anyway, only console users should use the gain parameter available in Project Cars 2 to reduce or increase the final output of the force feedback effects. Then we have the volume parameter. This parameter is the internal volume of the effect, or putting it in other words, the force feedback level that happens to be just before the gain parameter. Decrease it if you are getting clipping or you want to reduce the general weight of the steering wheel and feel the lighter force feedback effects more pronounced. Or increase it if you are not having clipping and you want a heavier feeling on the steering wheel. The default value for this parameter is 50, and I think is perfect for most cars while using the T300. By the way, do you remember a few minutes ago I told you that this volume parameter could be mapped to buttons or keys? As you see is not a bad idea to do such thing, so you can adjust the volume of the force feedback while driving. Cool, isn't it? But let's move now to the next parameter, tone. Think about the equalization adjustments you can do while listening music or playing your electric guitar. That allows you to emphasize a group of frequencies so certain instruments or sounds stand out or have more punch than they would have if you are using a flat equalization, right? Well, this is more or less its function here too. Tone will allow you to emphasize certain force feedback effects. At zero, surface detail will be more obvious, but you will lose tire slip feeling. This is basically what the aligning torque parameter, also known as MZ, did in Project Cars 1. In the other hand a 100 value will emphasize tire slip while making surface detail less obvious. This would be the side load parameter in Project Cars 1, also known as FY. The default value for this parameter is 50. So you have a balanced feeling between surface detail and tire slip. Note that if you change this value you may need to adjust the volume parameter to avoid clipping or increase the force feedback. That shouldn't be a problem. As happened with volume you can map this tone parameter to buttons or keys and change it while driving, adjusting the volume later to your needs. And we have reached now the latest force feedback effect parameter, FX. Use it to increase or smooth the effects of surface detail, bumps or curbs. But keep in mind this might provoke clipping or reduce track surface information you receive through the steering wheel, so you may need to adjust the volume parameter afterwards. 
Note the FX parameter can't be mapped to buttons or keys, so in order to change it you'll have to exit the track and come to this menu. The default value for the FX parameter is 50. But unless you remove the smoothing of the effects using a custom flavor file you may want to increase this value for some cars and tracks combos, because some feel a bit too smooth. But this is just a personal opinion, so I encourage you to start with a default 50 value and change it later if you feel the need to do it. To finish talking about the force feedback parameters let me share something else with you. A part of having the option to map volume and tone to buttons or keys during the development process of Project Cars 2 force feedback parameters were available also in the in-car management menu. This feature was later removed and probably will not be there when the game is finally released. But Slightly Mad Studios explained in the internal WMD forums that it might be back at a later date. So, please don't consider this something official because it's not. But keep in mind this may be available in a later patch and you could use that menu to adjust or check your force feedback parameters. Now that we have completed the longest section of the video let me show you the new force feedback widget. This little app will allow you to monitor the force feedback signal being sent to your steering wheel, so you can tweak it in order to avoid clipping and get the best of it. If you played Project Cars 1 you probably remember how it looked back then. It was basically a line graph shown in the heads-up display telemetry mode but it has been revamped and improved in Project Cars 2. Yes, we still have the line graph where zero signal would be on the middle of the graph, while clipping would be shown as a flat line when the signal hits the top of the bottom limit of the graph. But as you can see a new histogram graph has been added. A part of the device name. A bunch of bar graphs are showing the force feedback signal information. The horizontal bar shows the force feedback signal from 0 to 100%, while the vertical ones split the signal in five sections of 20%, covering the 0 to 100% range, while a sixth bar shows the signal going over 100%, which would be the infamous clipping. But let me show you how it looks in real time while playing. To do that let me jump to the track. As you can see both graphs are now located on the bottom left section of the screen if the heads up to display is enabled and set on the telemetry mode. Do you see them there moving? And if any clipping occurs or the signal is too smooth or weak you can detect it easily and change the force feedback parameters to get the kind of force feedback you want. Okay, now we're finally reaching the end of the video. But before that I'm going to share with you the Cars and Tracks Force Feedback Spreadsheet. After months of testing I decided to create a spreadsheet containing all Cars and Tracks present in Project Cars 2. So I could control how the Force Feedback system evolved and how this affected every car. Besides, this would allow me to know which car and track combos were the best in terms of Force Feedback. But let me explain you what the spreadsheet contains. First of all the Windows Game Controller settings and the device settings I talked about some minutes ago. Second the Force Feedback Flavor. Gain, Volume, Tone and FX settings I recommend for every car. It also contains the overall Force Feedback score of the car. I created this score to keep track of how good a car feels in terms of force feedback. The score goes from 1 to 4 stars, being 1 the lowest rating, which doesn't mean the force feedback is bad while 4 is the highest. These scores were set using only one track, Knock Hill International. 
The reason behind this being that this track has tons of bumps and surface detail, but also turns and height changes. In my opinion this makes this track the best in Project Cars 2 to test the new force feedback system. The spreadsheet also contains the full list of tracks and their overall force feedback score. This will help you to know what tracks are more rewarding in terms of force feedback and which ones aren't. As you will see some have a lot of surface detail and bumps while others are smooth and this transforms the force feedback experience a lot. You will also find in the spreadsheet recommended car and track combos. But again, I think the perfect track to start testing and enjoying the force feedback is Knockhill International, so I encourage you to test any new car there first. As I told you some minutes ago the spreadsheet also contains a custom force feedback file. This file doesn't only feel great if you are using a Thrustmaster T300. It also contains descriptions explaining what the parameters in the file mean so you can learn how it works and make your own custom file. And on a final note let me tell you that this spreadsheet is being updated constantly. As the force feedback of Project Cars 2 has been evolving until the last version before release and will probably receive more updates through patches once is released. I'll continue updating it and adding more information related to force feedback. Here goes a summary of the contents of the spreadsheet so you don't miss anything. To know how to access the spreadsheet go to the description of this video. The link to it will be available there. And now my final words, which come in form of tip and tricks. Use raw or informative flavors as starting point to configure your force feedback. Start by using the default values I shared with you, gain 100, and volume, tone and FX as 50. Don't forget to map the volume and tone to buttons or keys so you can adjust their values while driving. Use Knockhill International anytime you're going to drive a car for first time. I think is the best track in terms of force feedback. First time you are going to play Project Cars 2 I strongly encourage you to select one of the cars which have 4 stars as force feedback score. Examples of these cars are the Radical RX C Turbo, the Lotus Type 25 Climax, Ligier LMP2 cars, the McLaren F1 GTR, the Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.516 DTM of the Ferrari 488 GT3. Use the force feedback widget to avoid clipping. Check the All Cars and Track Force Feedback spreadsheet to get the latest updates about the force feedback settings. And don't forget to check too the official Project Cars forum at http colon slash slash forum dot projectcarsgame.com. And of course, enjoy the game. So, I hope this video has been useful to you. If you liked it please click the thumbs up button. If you have any comments please don't hesitate to share them with me below. Video ends here. See you soon, humans. She robot out.